Hello and welcome. Um, you know, today I decided to pop into a, um, a, a fundraising bazaar, and uh, it turned out that I sort of hit the mother load of used books, so I wound up buying quite a few, um, sort of out of out of uh, out of the ordinary for me. I don't I don't typically uh, buy a lot of used books just because of space issues, but um, this was so much fun to shop these books, and um, I did restrain myself somewhat but I did wind up with 17 bucks worth of books and I thought it would be uh, kind of fun to run through them so they're not in any kind of order uh, I'll just start with the paperbacks and then the hardcovers okay so the, um, the first one is Sapiens a brief history of humankind by Yuval Noah Harari this book um, sort of tells the story of humans as a species the history of humans as a species sort of how we became to be who we are as a species. Um, I read Yuval Noah Harari's um, second book, uh, Homo Deus, earlier this year and really loved it. So I was thrilled to come across this um, paperback version of Sapiens because this is on my want to read uh, list and I do hope to get to this still this fall. Um, this is apparently a UK edition. So I don't know what it is with me lately with getting used UK editions um, around here. So anyway, um, looking forward to this. Let me put that back there. So the next one is um, Roshalda by Herman Hesse. So I don't know a lot about this. I, I'm a big fan of Herman Hesse. I, I've read several of his works. I have more planned to read next year as well. Uh, this says a semi-autobiographical, Herman Hesse's semi-autobiographical fourth novel, uh, Roshalda tells the story of a world-famous painter, Johann Veraguth and of the process of self-discovery that ultimately permits him to break loose and seek an authentic life in India. So this sounds really, really Herman Hesse. So um, I'm looking forward to, to reading this. Um, then I picked up uh, Death in Venice and Other Stories by Thomas Mann. Uh, let me see what all the stories are in here. There's seven other stories. Death in Venice, Tony Kroger. Uh, Mario and the Magician, Disorder and Early Sorrow, A Man and His Dog, The Blood of the Valsungs, Tristan and Felix Krull. Um, so I have not read a lot of Thomas Mann. I, I was planning to get to some Thomas Mann next year, um, but not these stories. So these stories, I thought this would be kind of cool to read. This edition is from, I looked it up, uh, saw it earlier, it's, I think it's 1955. Uh, third printing, February 1955. Love the cover. It's real vintage looking. Yeah, so then next we have um, Istanbul Passage by Joseph Cannon. There we are. Um, it says, I'm not familiar with this book, but since it's set in Istanbul, I'm kind of a sucker for Istanbul stories. So it said, it, it's an espionage novel. I know that much. Uh, it says, uh, Istanbul survived the Second World War as a magnet for refugees and spies. Even expatriate American Leon Bauer was drawn into this shadow world, doing undercover odd jobs in support of the Allied war effort. Now, as the espionage community begins to pack up and an apprehensive city prepares for the grim realities of post-war life, Leon is given one last routine assignment, but when the job goes fatally wrong, an exchange of gunfire, a body left in the street, and a potential war criminal on his hands, Leon is trapped in a tangle of shifting loyalties and moral uncertainty, played out against the bazaars and mosques and faded mansions of this knowing ancient Ottoman city. Istanbul Passage is the unforgettable story of a man swept up in the dawn of the Cold War. So an espionage story. I haven't read a lot of these lately, um, but I like them when they're good. So I'm hoping this one's going to be good. Okay, and then we have another um, Istanbul story, another story set in Turkey. This is the Museum of Innocence by Orhan Pamuk. Um, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, I think, in 2006. 
Again, I don't know a lot about this, but I came across it and thought I've never read anything uh, by Pamuk, and so I thought uh, this would be as good a place as any to start. Um, it says, it's a perfect spring day in Istanbul. Kamal, a wealthy heir, is about to become engaged to the aristocratic Sibyl. When he in, in, encounters Fusun, a, a beautiful shop girl, he falls in love and finds his established world of westernized families, opulent parties, society gossip, and dining room rituals is shattered. This novel, this haunting novel of memory, desire, and loss sets a ferociously high standard for the literary f fiction of the new decade. So I think this came out, let's see when it was published. Um... It's like 2008 in Istanbul, in Turkey, and then um, published in the UK in 2009. Um, this paperback edition published in 2010. This is yet another UK edition that I have somehow wound up with here. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this because I'm not familiar with this author, so I'm hoping that this is going to be a good introduction. Then I decided to pick up A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. I've read this before. I've actually read this a couple of times before. It's, it's one of the laugh-out-loud funny books. I just no longer owned a copy, and so when I came across this copy, I decided to pick it up so that I could have a copy again. Um, and I would love to reread this. I'm not sure I'll get this reread this December, but I will revisit this again at some point in the future. This is set in New Orleans. Very eccentric characters. Um, just really funny. Um, just really a, a great read. So I'm looking, I'm glad I found a copy so I can have a copy again. And, you know, I'll get around to rereading it again sometime in the future. Um, let's see, just to, a bit more about it if you're not familiar with it. The hero of John Kennedy Tools' incomparable comic classic is one Ignatius J. Riley. Huge, obese, fractious, fastidious, a latter-day gargantua, a Don Quixote of the French Quarter. His story bursts with wholly original characters, denizens of New Orleans, lower depths, incredibly true-to-life dialogue, and the zaniest series of high and low comic adventures. That's from the Chicago Sun-Times' Sun review, um, and I just love this book, so yeah. Then into the hard hardbacks, this is The Prophet by um, Khalil Gibran. Um, I have had this on my want-to-read list and was uh, planning on putting this on my must-read list for next year, so um, I'm glad to uh, have come across this copy. This is from the 71st printing, August of 1964, and the contents... Um, on love, on marriage, on children, on giving, on eating and drinking, on work, on joy and sorrow, on houses, on clothes, on buying and selling, on crimes and punishment. These are poetry, and it also, this edition contains um, the artist's illustrations. There's 12 illustrations in it by the artist, apparently. So, yeah. The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Then um, I picked up um, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet uh, by David Mitchell. Uh, this is the author of David Mitchell, also wrote Cloud Atlas, which I really love the book. I like the movie too, but I like the book much better. And I had meant to read this following reading Cloud Atlas, and it's just one of those things I never got around to doing. So um, this is a real nice hardcover. Um, let's see if it's the first... Uh, looks like it's a, um, don't know if it's, doesn't appear, to, it's definitely not a first printing, but anyway, from 2010. So, yeah, David Mitchell, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet. Um, let's see, the sort of, let's see what it's about, if I can find, doesn't seem to be a blurb about the book. I know it's set in Japan. The year is 1799. The place is Dejima in Nagasaki Harbor, the high-walled, fan-shaped artificial island that is the Japanese Empire's single port and sole window onto the world, designed to keep the West at bay. The farthest outpost of the war ravaged Dutch East Indies Company and a de facto prison for the dozen foreigners permitted to live and work there. To this place of devious merchants, deceitful interpreters, costly courtesans, earthquakes, and typhoons comes Jacob de Zoet, a devout and resourceful young clerk who has five years in the East to earn a fortune of sufficient size 
to win the hand of his fi wealthy fi fiancé back in Holland. So, yeah, um, not sure what else is going to go on, but sounds kind of good to me. So, looking forward to that. Then I bought uh, French and German, the authentic librettos of the French and German authors. Um, yeah, there it is. This is a libretto. So it's the published librettos um, of different French language and, and German language operas. This particular edition uh, came out in, looks like, 1939. So it's got a pretty nice cover. Um, yeah, so there's, um, looks like Carmen, The Magic Flute, The Barter Bride, Tales of Hoffman, Hansel and Gretel, Romeo and Juliet. Looks like it's got all the Wagner operas. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of wanting to get a book of librettos, so I figured this is, you know, for like a dollar. This was, or two dollars for a hard, hard cover. Um, this was a good, good place to start. So, yeah. And then continuing on the opera theme, I got the Encyclopedia of Opera by Hill and Wang, by David Ewan, published by Hill and Wang. Um, this is just a not published 1955. This is just an encyclopedia, so kind of people, operas, composers um, in an encyclopedia type format. So this is a good reference book. Then another one. Uh, Kobe's Opera Book, uh, the definitive Kobe's Opera Book. Um, so this is another one. This has got 300, um, I think 300, uh, information about 300 different operas from what I gathered. Yeah, 300, more than, stories of more than 300 of the world's great operas are related in detail, complete with musical examples. Each entry is headed by a detailed log of the dates, places, and casts of the significant premieres and revivals of each work. So this is another reference opera book, op, uh, reference opera book that um, I'm really glad to have because I, I love opera, but I don't have a lot of reference works. So um, these were really great finds for me. And then finally, I'm just going to toggle if I'm not careful. Finally, I got this box set. Isn't this cool? Box set of the complete short stories of Somerset Mom in two volumes. So just open one of them up. Uh, let's just get a little more information about it. Um, let's see who it was published by. Doubleday. Um, looks like from 1932. It's another British uh, publication, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I like, I've read some Somerset Mom, um, and I plan to read, uh, uh, at least The Razor's Edge, uh, is, is probably going to be on my must-read list for next year, but I've never read the short stories, so, um, this box set, I just think it's so cool, kind of got a 30s vibe to it, and, um, uh, glad to come across that for a couple of bucks, right? So, um, so that's my haul. Um, now I've got, uh, got some reading to do, so, um, Thanks for tuning in, and I will have a book chat coming up pretty soon. I have finished a book that I haven't done a chat on, so that'll be coming up very soon, among other things. So stay tuned. Take care. Bye.